No, nope. let me uh, let me go back to that. You're actually probably right. Hang on. Now let me try it again. Aha! Whoever said that? Go. Who said that to me? Who was it that said that? Alex, Matt, good job. All right. It was my camera was in use. You know why it was in use? Because I was testing it to see what it would look like. And uh, all right, man. Okay, so let me see who I got here. John, Jay, Martha, Matt, I see you. Olga, Renee, Claudio, although you look a lot like James, Claudio. <laughs> Mike, Tommy Toogie, Denise, Frank. Frank has no camera on. Emmanuel, I see you there. April, Jamal, Arthur, Russell, Robin, Ross, Vince. Ross's iPhone. Uh, Frank's iPhone. Okay, wait, wait. Up, oh, I see you there. All right. John, Kevin. Uh, do, wanna, do we have a second page? Oh, there it is. Up, oh, a whole second page. All right. All right, I see you guys. How's everybody doing? Can you guys all hear me? Yeah. 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 And my wife's here. She wanted to say hello, too. I had her sneaking in the sideline. There she is. Hi. I dragged her out here to the garage with me so we can say hello to you guys. So um, so you guys know how this works, right? So you're, you're generally automatically on mute. If you're not on mute, put yourself on mute, if, um, especially if you have any rumbling going on, any dogs barking, kids in the background. Um, I can already tell some people are not on mute because we hear all the, the yapping. If, um, if you put yourself on mute, but if you have anything to say, then just click the unmute so then we can hear you. Um, but, uh, but for the time being, just click yourself on mute until you have something to say, or if you have something to add, or you need to speak or have a question, um, anything like that. So, so first off, I know I just told you to put, uh, put you on mute, now I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> so, so how's everybody doing? First off, is anybody getting anything done? I know we have several deals that are in the middle of going on, but besides the ones I know about, does anybody have any, uh, any deals going on right now um, that I do not know about? Martha, I see you up there. I know we got an appointment tomorrow. Um, so I want to tell you guys about uh, Martha's appointment. I thought, Martha, that was a great story I heard yesterday. Um, so Martha got a lead yesterday, which we have the appointment tomorrow, but came from dog hunting from, Martha, you can unmute yourself and correct me if I'm wrong, um, from a year ago. That's right, Scott. About a year ago, I, uh, this is a dog hunting at appointment. Go ahead, Martha. I talked to the woman a year ago. She had a tenant who didn't want anybody to disturb her, so she didn't want to show the house, but she's interested in selling, just not at this time. She saved my number for a year and called me back. Fantastic. Amazing. And this is, it, it's one of the things I'm constantly telling you guys, a couple different things. First off, which is why it's so important that you have a phone number that you're going to have indefinitely because you don't know when that lead, postcard, dog hunting, a billboard card at a gas station, we don't know when that person is going to put that card on their refrigerator or on their bulletin board to call you back someday. And so for number one is that's why it's so important that you have the same phone number forever. But on top of that, this is why I'm constantly telling everybody the business gets easier and easier the longer you're in it. Because when you start off, you have no yesterday, you have no last year, you have no, you have no leads from six months ago, you have nothing. But now you've been in it for a, a month, two months, three months, a year. Now you start getting calls back from the appointments that you had six months ago or a year ago. Or sometimes, I don't know if George is on here, um, sometimes it's two and three years ago. George got a lead that I think was three or four years old. And, and the person finally called him back and he ended up doing the deal. And so, you know, a lot of times people think like, no, no, video. you're just so good. But the reality is it's the longer you're in it, the easier it gets because now you have all these leads that are hanging out there as long as you keep the follow-up system going. And so if you, if you don't have your phone muted or your uh, computer muted, go ahead and mute it because we can hear still a lot of ruckus going on. Um, but that is why the follow-up system is so important. And with the follow-up, I want to ask you guys, whether you're, doing, um, whether you're doing Podio or whether you're doing My Deal Factory, as everybody, and I'm watching you, so even if you, if, even if you don't speak, if you're muted, you can just raise your hand. Has everybody been setting up your follow-up system? because it is critically, critically important. And mind you, like I set it up now for three years because I had time, I'm sitting home, I got plenty of time on my hands. So I literally set up my follow-up system for three years out. 
If I get a lead now and stick them into the system, they're going to get a call from me, a text from me, an email from me for the next three years, every two weeks, three weeks, a month. So they're going to think I'm constantly thinking about them. And it's going to compound over many deals over the future, I guarantee it. And so with that, I ask you guys, have you been setting up your appointments? Whoever's not muted, if you can go ahead and mute yourself. Um, so whoever's not, um, if, you, if you're not setting it up now when we have this downtime, and even if you're still working full time, so I know some people are like, well, I'm not down, I'm still working, right? I'm still working every day. Even if you're still working, you're not going out to dinner, you're not going to the movies, you're not going to get your hair done, you're not going anywhere. So even if you're still working full time, you still have way more time than we normally have because it just can't help it. I don't know if you saw my post I did yesterday. My, my book finally came out on Audible yesterday because I had all this time to finally finish it. It's been four years I've been trying to finish it, but I have no excuse right now. I have nothing but time. So any of those things we've been saying, well, if only I had time, I'd get that done. Those excuses are gone because we have time now. So, so with that said, and I know I had everybody, um, um, everybody asking, uh, every, everybody told everybody to mute themselves, but, um, but I want to ask you guys, have you been setting up your follow-up system? And Duane, I think you just asked a question. Um, you have questions about setting this up. So go ahead, Duane, you can unmute yourself and just go ahead and ask me what that question was. I see you down there. Okay. There you uh, can go. you hear me? Yep. Yeah, just um, for one, I'm still trying to get familiar with Deal Machine. Um, deal Factory or Deal Machine? Deal Machine. Deal Machine is not the follow-up one. That's the one for driving for dollars. Okay, so I need Deal Factory for follow-up? Yep, you're still brand new, so you're not even, you probably didn't even receive those, that segment of emails yet. No, I haven't. But I'll take care of it with you, and if need be, I will get together with you and take care of it. Okay, I'm, um, sure. I'm becoming less and, you know, I don't want to get into a whole thing with you guys, but I'm becoming less and less concerned with the whole uh, world we're living in right now. I know it's still the way it is on the news, but I am starting to go on appointments again. Um, you know, we sat home for as long as we sat at home, but I think it's time to get back to work. The market is great right now. We have deals going on. Emmanuel, I see you on there. You got a deal pending right now that should close hopefully in the next two weeks. I think it's supposed to. It's scheduled anyway. Um, James, I see you down there, even though you think says Claudio, um, you have some deals going. I think you closed on one today or tomorrow, but you also got a new contract we're working on, which I think is fantastic. And we're still following up on that other one in Great Neck. Michelle, I saw you before. I know you've got a deal going right now. I lost you. I guess I can only hold but so many people on the screen at a time. Oh, okay. Right here. Um, oh, there you are, Michelle. And, um, and Sal, I don't know if Sal's on. I know Sal's got a couple deals going. A bunch of you guys have deals going. So the deals have not slowed down. The market is fantastic. I do not regret our decision to hold off on marketing for April. I think it was the right thing to do, even though it kills me to not market. But I know people weren't seeing anybody. And I just felt like we're going to throw away 20 grand because, you know, people, you're going to get the leads, but nobody wanted to see you and nobody wants you over there. So we waited it out, but the marketing's starting again right now. And I have a feeling we're going to be in better time than ever. So we have a few different, different strategies, different marketing techniques Crap. and, um, oh, <laughs> and different things that I want to share with you guys. And Jill, I hear, you, um, I hear you down there, and I was thinking about you for one of these systems also, and I'm going to talk to you about it in a minute. So we have a few different ways that we want to get into buying houses specifically right now, and this is what I wanted to discuss with you guys today, because the old way, the way we always did everything still works exactly the same. So I'm not saying to stop anything we're already doing, but the world's changing, and you know there's some different situations going on, and so we're trying to be creative and come up with new situations, new solutions for the problems that we're already dealing with. Um, and so a few of the new things that we are working on, and I want to touch on them, and then I want to answer questions. And some of you guys may be working on deals already that fit into that scenario that you may say, well, this deal didn't work. However, if I do it this way, it may in fact work. And so there's going to be a couple different things. So first off, wholetailing. So wholetailing, you, know, you guys, I'm going to go back into it. So start over because I know some of you are new. So wholetailing, if you remember, wholetailing, we actually close on the property. It's a lot like wholesaling um, where we just assign it and it's, from the, it's directly from the seller to our buyer. But wholetailing is different. We actually close on the property and then we sell it. We list it and sell it. 
generally you do some work to the property. Sometimes it's just closing on it. So you have access to show it. Sometimes it's cleaning it out. Sometimes it may be fixing a roof or doing something to the property. More often than not, it's doing nothing. It's just the ability to you own it. So now you can show it and or list it and get full value. So with wholetailing, the, one of the big challenges with wholetailing is that um, you have to have the money to close on it. You know, and that's, if a house is a hundred grand, you have to have the hundred grand to close on it, or you can borrow money, you know, it, it works, but the numbers have to be drastically different. Well, I only, I've done three wholetails in the past year. So it's not something we do a ton of them. And I'll tell you about the three so I can let you know if these situations fall into line with you. And then how we have a new solution that'll help. It's got an expense with it, but it doesn't, the expense is irrelevant if you end up making more than you would have made otherwise. So I did that one, I told you guys that condo I did, right? The condo in Virginia Beach. This was a deal that I would have made $10,000 on. The highest I was able to get was 10,000 um, assigning it. But I didn't assign it because I felt I had better value than the 10,000, so I closed on it. Now I had used my own money, so I didn't have the extra fee that we would use if we used hard money. So I closed on it, all I did to it was I painted it and I changed the countertop. That, so it's not technically a rehab, I didn't really rehab anything, I just painted it and I changed the countertop. But when I sold it, instead of me making a $10,000 assignment fee, I made about $45,000. So that's a big difference. That's a big difference to make it worth the extra effort, right? And it sold right away as soon as it got listed. Um, the second one I did was one, I'm looking, I saw her on here, Robin, there you are, one I bought from Robin. And, um, and so this one had a tenant in it, which is why it was challenging. It had a tenant in it, so it was really hard to sell because rehabbers don't want it, had a tenant. So what I did with that one is I closed on it. Robin actually wholesaled it to me. I closed on it, and I, again, I used my own money. And that one, eventually, I had to list it. You know, I listed it on the market. With, once the tenant moved out, I listed. No, that one I listed with the tenant in it. And I ended up, I think I made $15,000 on it. Now that one would not have worked if I did not use my own money because generally it's about $10,000 as a fee to pay to use money. So if I had to use my own money, it wouldn't have worked just to make an extra five. It'd be too much risk for five grand. And then the last one is the one that we're in the middle of right now. And I'm sure I've told you guys the story about the one we're doing in New York. And that one we closed on and that's gonna be a 